So I hitchhiked into the Carinage where I'm hauling my boat out tomorrow and met the owner of the boat here, Dominique. So nice, already love him. Uh, we've set an appointment for me to haul my boat tomorrow at 9.30. It's about eight miles to get there. And as we know, I am very slow boat, so I'm probably gonna leave at six in the morning or earlier. It's 5.30 in the morning. I just woke up and I am getting my boat ready to head off to the boatyard. All right, I'm off. Gex final engine run. Fingers crossed. Breakfast is this stack of crackers and a thermos of green tea. I fixed my autopilot last night. It was really nice after about, I don't know, three minutes of motoring, just getting out of the bay. The wind just instantly filled in. I put up my sails, turned off the engine, and thank God, because check it out. That's from 10 minutes of motoring. It's crazy, scary. So I'm really glad that I'm heading towards a travel lift. Welcome to Winterfee Sailing. I'm single-handing my Grind 27 around the world. I started my trip in Maine with a very cold 10-month overhaul of my entire boat. Solo sailed through the Caribbean, the Panama Canal, and 41 days alone across the Pacific. I've been cruising in French Polynesia for the last year and a half, kiting, spearfishing, freediving, and of course fixing all the things that break on my boat. Aboard the Gek, I have no fridge, water maker, fancy electronics, and my rowboat is a dinghy with a sail rig. If you're interested in seeing my daily life, check out my Instagram, at BoatLizard. Okay, enjoy the episode. I am coming between the narrow little pass, uh, it's very scary compared to the two modus, psych, it's not. That mountain in the background you can see is Abora Bora. This is Ta'a over here, and then to our left we have Raiatea. Raiatea and Ta'a are in the same ring of coral. And all of these boats ahead are part of a different marina. I'm gonna go past these around the corner, and that's where my haul out is gonna be. Oh, I'm getting a little nervous. Um, it's been two over two years. No, almost exactly two years actually since I hauled last in Panama. And I'm not really nervous for anything in particular. It's more just that it's something that I don't do a lot so like I'm not worried about getting into the slings or like the boatyard seems awesome so I'm not worried about them fucking anything up but it's just ooh, it's a new thing it's a new thing for me and the Gek how do you feel Gek? I've taken down the head sail because I'm going too fast um, I don't need to be there until 8 30 and uh, my ETA was starting to be a little bit earlier than that so I'm just kind of slugging but I like slug life it's good Okay, so I had my engine on for five minutes coming out of the bay. As you remember, I showed you what the engine looked like then. I had it on for about five minutes tops to get in here. Let's try to take a look at how that thing too. Okay, we have some water in here. I'm just gonna clean this out and then we'll take a look in here. Oh yeah, so apparently in my eyes. It's hard to see, but it's over the engine mounts. The boat's not really moving enough for you to see where the water is, but uh, I'm gonna time how long it takes me to pump it out with my little gold pump. Oh my gosh. Seven minutes of pumping. You're 
soul is lonely, sad, and blue. Ain't got no loving shoulders to lean on. There's always a sunny side across the river. Take a ride, take a swim, and all your worries go away. Go cross the river, and you'll be fine. Go counting winners, it's right down the line. You'll be all right from sunny side. I just got up and starting my day. Here I am in the book. Probably um, there's two things that are super weird for me being hauled up. One is that my brain keeps creating um, movement. Like I was standing looking out the companionway. And I could actually see my boat moving and these boats moving. And when I step from side to side of my boat, my boat's so little that it always moves in response to my movements. It's like we're one thing moving together. And obviously it's not moving now, but I still feel like it's moving and it's really weird. Other weird thing was uh, I woke up, I climbed down my little ladder and went to go use the bathroom. And the, just <laughs> getting out of bed and then instantly going for a walk without having to bail the dinghy out, get in the dinghy, get the oars, row to shore, tie the dinghy up. Just like so easy to get up and walk across the land. That really struck me this morning. at the yard are so nice here um the first ladder that i had for my boat was way too long and it was homemade and the rungs were weirdly far apart but i didn't say anything i was just like oh yeah a ladder cool that's great thank you so much and then another one of them came by and he was like no no, no this ladder is not gonna work and he was gone for about five minutes and i was just sitting on my boat like oh he comes back and he came back with this ladder like the Mercedes of ladders. It's super nice. And I have this hose running into my boat, but there's no end. I'm going to fold the end of the hose over and vice grip it shut, turn the water on, and then maybe I can unvice grip it when I want water, revice grip it when I don't. I just spent the entire morning um, cleaning out the bilge in front of the engine, the one that always gets full of water. There's basically in the bottom of the bilge under the cockpit behind the engine, there's just gunk, which is oil. Uh, so what's been happening is that oil and salt water have been leaking into that bilge for the past year and a half and have created a really nice sludge <laughs> in the bottom. So all my lines, which were down there, uh, I've just spent about an hour under the tap with a bottle of dish soap scrubbing uh, oil off my lines. And the last thing I have to do is clean the bottom of the aft bilge, but I'm too hot to prepare food or to care what I eat. So lunch is kind of peas. And I just put some lemon juice in here. And it's surprisingly not bad. Stay tuned for what's up next in Holly's Gourmet Kitchen. Okay, I've hit on something that is surprisingly tasty. Peas, lemon juice, nutritional yeast, and a little bit of coconut oil. The raw kind where you can taste the coconut. Mix that all together. 
in the can, add a spoon, and this is nice. space for the afternoon. I am getting the last of the water out of my engine, or from under the engine. I'm just trying to get this feeder hose oriented. The last exciting thing is getting this into the bucket. because this much water came out from under the engine and this is after I've pumped everything that I could pump out from the boat side so this has always been sitting in here this is probably about two gallons and there's still more that I can't access I'm gonna have to sponge it out which is gonna soak but at least I got all of this out it is hotter than summer and hell around here coincidentally Summer in Hell, it's my new fragrance line. Check it out on my social media platforms. Ooh, heat stroke, heat stroke. Um, I'm gonna show you something. Let me get back in this tiny. One point, the worst I ever saw the water was to here, which for reference, it's that far. <laughs> yeah, man, rock on like four inches deep of water um which is if i had just pumped out two gallons that i couldn't even access i mean it must have been like 20 gallons in here uh which is scary i am <laughs> gratuitous mustache i'm going to have to do some pretty big tlc on my engine uh wd-40 rust busting to keep it happy but the first job is to finish mopping up the water and the gunk, which is no fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm procrastinating. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think I am beautiful. She's clean. She's as good as I can get. There's one compartment under the engine that I just can't access from here. So I think I'm going to try to go in from the other side. And if I can't get it, I just can't get it. Day two in the hard and my last full day, or is this day three? Morning two, morning two, day two and a half. Last full day, um, what I'm gonna do next is flush out my engine with fresh water. So I have a bucket of fresh water here and I'm just going to get easy access to my sea strainer. Um, I'm so, ugh, this would be easier with two people, but the distance between the ignition and the sea strainer is short. So. I'm going to turn on the engine and then really quickly run down here and start pouring fresh water into the sea strainer until I've used up that whole bucket and that should be more than enough. Because um, when I winterized my engine last, I used two gallons of antifreeze and this is a five gallon bucket, so this should be more than enough. And then once I've used the last of the water, really quickly run up and shut the engine off. Hopefully. Nothing bad happens. Okay, so in under the sinks bill, which is full of my plastic bags, we have a little sea strainer. I'm gonna get a funnel and uh, set myself up so that I can easily pour water into here.
the little geck is put away. Everything is inside. Solar panels off. Breaker off. Gas off. Just have some last things drying outside. Garbage bag. Um, yeah, this is my little pack I'm bringing. It's going to take me two days to get to Maine, so I just need uh, some changes of clothes and some warm weather clothes, which, surprise, surprise, take up a ton of room. I have, like, one sweatshirt and it takes up half my bag. Woo! And my laptop so I can do some editing while I'm in Maine and do some uploads on Wi-Fi instead of using cell data. Very exciting. Dripping with sweat. My boat is going to get so hot and I hope not too moldy. I left one hatch cracked with a screen in it um, to try to get some ventilation. Everything else is buttoned up. Uh, my next step is to uh, walk to the road and try to hitchhike to the airport. Here we go. Very exciting. Across the river, you'll be fine. Go counting winners, ride down the line. You'll be alright, sunny side. Tonight my dad and I are having a beer and brochures. <laughs> beer and catalogs. Beer and catalogs. <laughs> Night. I have brought a big list of all the things that I need and we are going to order it. I need stuff. I need stuff for my boat. <laughs> and these are some of my lists and more on my phone. <sighs> Here's the list. We're almost done. And then we're gonna go online and order all this stuff. Today I'm in my dad's shop and this is where I did all of the refitting of my boat. I think I've given you guys a tour of it the last time I was here, but that was a really long time ago. So we're gonna do a little run through of what he has, what it looks like and maybe some memories of things that I did when I was here too. My dad has a business called Direction Woodworks where he does custom finished woodwork on people's boats and houses. And in his spare time, he builds guitars. This is the drill press that I used to make all of the holes in my lockers where you put your little finger through. Very exciting. Over here, we have the fasteners alley. This is beautiful. I'm just drooling being over here. Fan saw where I cut out all of my knobs for my lockers. My dad has spent his whole life working in and around boats, starting in boatyards when he was a teenager. And one of the joys of them stopping cruising and sort of getting settled into land life was that he was finally able to build a business where he could do the parts of boat work that he really enjoys, which is the precision finished carpentry, building custom furniture and pieces for boats, and of course his hobby of playing guitar and building guitars. He was really instrumental in my entire refit of my boat. I definitely could not have done it without access to this beautiful shop and his beautiful expertise. 
it's really cool to come back and remember my roots and remember where I came from and the people who helped me get to where I am today. Then we have this room. Smells like epoxy. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Shiny, shiny. Yeah, so. The church pew. Church pews. <laughs> it kind of looks like it. <laughs> there are uh, the steps. The steps go in the. Oh, cool. Let's go. That way, then they open up. This gets painted white. It's just um, the epoxy. Those are all my window cells, window frames. Those are some hatches I made last year. I've got to paint them. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. So we are here in the shop and my dad is walking me through how to install all the things that I ordered for my boat. <laughs> yes, first thing we're looking at is the new waterproof hatch that I'm getting for my anchor chain locker. And then we have a whole box full of toys that we're going to be looking at. 14, 15. Such service. It's good for the hatch. Cheekity check. It's the Martin Chandlery. These are anchor shackles. I think you know how those work yes. right now. <laughs> um, okay, someone's going to say that you shouldn't install plastic, but I, just, I will disagree. Did you hear that? <laughs> you do. There is nothing wrong with Marlon through hole fittings. They are perfectly good. They're going to be through bolted properly. We had them on our steel boat for 15 years. We sailed into the ice, got iced in. They're fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is the proper way to hole saw because if you do it. Okay, the mistake for hole sawing is especially a brand new one like this, which is really sharp. If with no pilot hole, you just start. It grabs and does that. That's and if it's on the boat, that move, but if it's on the boat, it's going to do this because it, it chows in. So you always. And then if you're doing it something nice on an instrument panel or some nice piece of wood, and that happens, um, your day is ruined. So these are always quarter inch. So you drill a pilot hole. And this fits in the pot hole, nice and steady. And then you can really, under very controlled circumstances, you can drill a hole. That is the proper way to drill a hole with a hole saw. Very cool. Very <laughs> I would have messed up my day. <laughs> I messed up your day. Or your hole, one or the other. Both. These through holes thread in. These are um, straight thread. And they only go in that far. Uh -huh. It goes in that far. So you're going to have to cut off some. Oh, okay. Yeah, depending on the thickness of your hole. I'm back in place. That stops, so that's going to be what you see on the outside. Oh, uh, okay. And this is, takes up the distance. Okay. That's plus, mm -hmm. that's minus, or negative. That's plus, and that's minus. Okay. Um, <laughs> for this short. We're testing the LEDs. My dad is the positive terminal. Ding. This. Um, we have action. <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> Not this at home, kids. <laughs> Only in your shop. My family moved to Maine in 2004. My parents spent about 15 years circumnavigating on their Cal 25. They had my brother, sister, and I along the way. 
After they had three kids, they bought a 33-foot steel boat, and we spent about five years in the Arctic icing the boat in, traveling to places like Svalbard, Greenland, Norway, and spending a winter iced in on a pier in Newfoundland. We then sailed down to Maine from Newfoundland, and my parents sold their boat and bought a 25-acre parcel of forest and a chainsaw. They cut a little road into the middle of the woods and designed and completely home-built their off-the-grid solar home. The only outside help they had was to hire contractors to dig and pour the foundation, but everything else they did themselves. They based the design of their house off of things they'd always daydreamed about having as a home when they were on the boat. My dad took classes in wiring and plumbing and completely wired and plumbed the whole house himself. My parents spent a whole summer climbing around on the roof, <laughs> doing roofing, um, carrying these huge beams. My mom is responsible for bringing nature inside the house. She's always liked this idea of indoor-outdoor, so she shingled one of the walls, built rock walls inside, and she takes pieces of the forest that she finds and loves and brings them into the whole house itself. Their house is a beautiful combination of Bodhi, naturey, architectury, just a little nook in the middle of the woods, completely isolated and at peace from the world. When I was visiting Maine for the month that I stayed, I saw deer running around in the backyard behind the house. There were blue heron nests in the swamp. Sometimes we see moose and a ton of other little critters all over the place. No neighbors in sight, just beautiful forest all around. I wish that I could visit Maine every year. Being on my boat is amazing and I love this trip that I'm doing, but one of the hardships is the amount that I miss my family and that I miss Maine. So being able to come back to Maine for a month was a real treat. Not only was I able to buy all the boat parts that I need for my haul out and get my dad's expert advice, but I was able to spend some quality family time and just remember where I came from. It's important for me to keep up this relationship that I have with my family. On next week's episode, I'm going to share with you guys a very cool project that one of my friends is working on, uh, refitting a traditional wooden tall ship. Some more projects that my dad and I worked on for my boat, things for me to bring back down, and a little more of the beauty of Maine before we head back to French Polynesia, Raiatea, and start digging into my boatyard projects where the real fun begins. So stay tuned for a little more Maine, some traditional wooden boats, and of course, a long sweaty haul out period in the boatyard. Thanks for watching this week's video, thanks for coming to Maine with me. I put out new videos every two weeks on YouTube and for my patrons you guys get a snack on the weeks that I don't put out a YouTube. Right now on Patreon I am reading through some of the journals that I've kept during other sailing trips and taking requests for any questions you have about parts of my life that I don't talk about on my YouTubes. Um, also, my merchandise, my t-shirts and mugs and hats and whatever else I have uh, is doing really well, flying off the shelves. If you guys would like to join the Wintipi Sailing Team, uh, you can go ahead and find my website in the info below for buying t-shirts. Woo! And let's see, what else? Um, thank you, Tish, my manager, for helping me schedule these videos on YouTube. Thank you guys for all your lovely comments. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash boatlizard. And for one-time donations, I have a PayPal, paypal.me slash boatlizard. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week, patrons, and YouTube. I'll see you in two weeks.